Okay. Hello, everyone. This is conversation three. Uh, last week, I did a lecture, a video lecture for all three conversation classes, but this week we have separated. This is conversation three, as you know, so a lot of you are uh, upper year students, which is good because you know how to use the system and uh, you've got some experience at university. Uh, there may be a freshman or two in this class, if that's the case, then um, please direct your questions towards my email address. But uh, most of you are probably trying to um, prepare yourselves for job interviews and uh, for your future, despite the fact that most of us are all stuck at home right now. So in the meantime, I think it's important for us to focus on what we can do uh, in terms of uh, getting a good quality education out of the situation. So conversation three students, um, this is how it's going to be from now on. Uh, I don't have a whiteboard today, but next week I will. I'm going to broadcast from my home office uh, using my improvised uh, selfie stick uh, iPhone uh, equipment. And uh, I heard that there's a possibility that we will, each professor will get their own webcam uh, in the near future if we have to continue the, to do this um, in the long term. The plan currently is for us to go back to school uh, April 6th, so we'll see how the next two weeks go. Um, now, today we're going to start the textbook and uh, Sorry about that. Your textbook is this one. Uh, Takeaway English 4 is the one we're going to use. And um, the first chapter is about happiness. So uh, I asked you to do a self-introduction and I think I got uh, all of the students sent me an email. Um, the due date for, for each assignment is going to be our normal class, which would be Friday. And uh, I would like you to make sure that you get it in on time. So you have an entire week to get the assignment done. If you leave it to the last minute and you send it in on Saturday, then that means it's going to be late. So please, um, earlier is better, but uh, at least send it to me by Friday every week. Um, we do have makeup lectures, but in your case, uh, I think the first one is in the middle of April, which is going to be on a Saturday. Um, that will be a cyber lecture as well, so you'll be used to that. You know, we uh, delayed the semester two weeks, so those uh, classes from the first two weeks will have to be made up. Um, the selected days were Saturday. Uh, the administration chose 10 Saturdays, so we have uh, make certain makeup days that uh, need to be done, and I've chosen to do them just like this. So once you get used to this, be aware, even if we go back to the classroom, that there's going to be a few cyber lectures on the weekend that we have to deal with later. In the meantime, um, all we have to do this week is deal with chapter one, which is about happiness. Um, unfortunately, because I'm recording myself and there's nobody to talk to, normally I'd be asking questions. So I, I am going to uh, ask questions, but I'll answer them myself because there's no one here to go back and forth with. So. The title of the chapter is, Don't Worry, Be Happy. And um, whenever I hear that expression, I, it's re it reminds me of a song. Um, you can look it up if you care to. Don't Worry, Be Happy. There's a person whistling for the first 30 seconds of the song. Um, that comes to mind immediately, which reminds me of, I guess, not, I don't see people doing it these days, but in the past, people used to, when they were relaxed or happy, they used to stroll down the street and uh, whistle. And if you saw somebody whistling like that, whether they whistled well or poorly, that just meant they were kind of carefree. Uh, so this is what the chapter is about. If you believe in that, if you subscribe to that idea that, that you don't need to worry and you should just be happy, then I think you're an easygoing person. I am not able to do that. I think it's partly because I'm a 
anxious all the time. I wonder what's happening and I think about things constantly. Sometimes I can't sleep because of these things. So don't worry, be happy doesn't work very well for me. If somebody says that to me, I say, well, I need to worry because I have a lot of things to think about. So that doesn't help. But if you're easygoing, then you say, don't worry, be happy. And there's, uh, I know some of you are very young, much younger than me. But when, when I was, uh, Growing up, there was a movie called The Lion King. You may be familiar with uh, maybe the play, uh, the musical, or uh, the recent Disney effort, which was, uh, you know, digital animated, uh, sorry, computer animated lions and uh, live action. Um, I'm going to talk about John Oliver later, and he, he played Zazu, that strange toucan, who uh, is the advisor to Muf Mustafa. Um, but anyway, in that movie there is a, a meerkat named Timon and uh, there's a warthog named Pumbaa and they sing this song called Hakuna Matata. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that right, but that's what it sounds like in the movie. They sing this song, it always made me laugh when I was young. Uh, Hakuna Matata, it means no worries and that's the same expression. Don't worry, be happy. No worries, which we, lots of people say that. In fact, uh, in Korea, I hear um, some of my friends who speak English very well. They, uh, that's when I s say, oh, is that okay? You, I'm wondering if something's wrong or they need something. And they say, oh, no, no worries, because that's what uh, some people say back home in Canada and the United States as well. So if that works for you, don't worry, be happy. Hakuna Matata. Uh, if you're like me, then you've got to find another way. So this is what this chapter is about, is about uh, what things uh, you can find to make you feel happy. Uh, one of the things that is in the chapter on page four, which I agree with and which I use on a daily basis almost, is uh, they use the word hilarious. It was hilarious, which means very funny. Something not doesn't make you laugh a little bit, um, but it's super funny is something hilarious. So, um, one of the things that relieves my stress the most is at the beginning of the day or at the end of the day, I just watch something that I think is funny. Uh, it could be political satire, or it could be a cartoon, or it could be uh, some memes that I find on the internet or somebody shared, whatever. Um, I just like to, you know, read, listen, or watch something that makes me laugh. Uh, and that I find that uh, very helpful, you know, to relieve my stress. And that makes me not necessarily happy, but it, I guess it makes me less unhappy, at least. Uh, but yes, uh, that's one of the sources of, of happiness for me is humor. Um, so one of the questions that I would have asked you in class to talk about is, first of all, think about what makes you feel happy? Eating your favorite food, going to your favorite place, playing your favorite game, watching your favorite show. Um, there's certain shows that um, I, I hate to promote things, you know, as a professor in an academic sphere, but I'll be honest, um, certain television shows just, uh, have a level of humor and um, intelligence to them that uh, even though they can be crude at times, they, they do um, make you, give you some emotional satisfaction. So um, I won't name any particular shows, but there's some shows, you know, it might be a drama or something in your case. It doesn't have to be humor. It can be a, a tragedy or something. It can be Game of Thrones, which is now over, but I remember when people were obsessing about Game of Thrones and they just couldn't wait for, I think it was broadcast on Sunday night. Everybody was just anticipating Sunday night and that was a source of happiness for millions of people. Uh, just the anticipation of the next episode of Game of Thrones. So, um, like I said to you before, self-introduction was the first assignment and every week for the first half of the semester until we get into the presentation period, which, and who knows what it's gonna be like 
um, considering how the coronavirus problem is going, if we're doing things through um, digital medium or I have to Skype you or something, I'm not sure exactly what's going to happen with presentations or interviews, but we'll just keep going the way we hope it will go, which is meet you being able to physically come to the classroom uh, and um, practice with me in real time um, and then visit my office for the exams and uh, do your presentation in front of your, your classmates. That's what we want to happen, but if it doesn't happen, we'll deal with that later. Uh, anyway, every week there's a different topic. So this week it's happiness and you're going to have to submit an assignment that goes along with the topic every time. Uh, there's two reasons for me asking you to do that. The first one is for you to do some homework for me to check and for me to give you feedback and for you to get you know some experience practicing um, with your English. And secondly, it literally is studying for the exam because uh, the questions that I give you each week are going to accumulate a, a set of six or seven questions which will be the questions that I ask you on the midterm. I'm going to ask you two questions and you have to answer them. So when you write, uh, do your best to think that, imagine that you're speaking, you know, when you write, don't worry about how formal it is. You're not writing an essay. I want you to write a paragraph, half a page every time, just like your self introduction and pretend that you're going to say it uh, and not like you're going to read it, but just that you're going to speak directly to a person because there's a difference, you know, between holding something that is written and reading it out loud and uh, actually having a conversation or, or speaking um, directly to people in an audience. And uh, I think that's what I'm doing right now, by the way. I, I have a bunch of notes right behind the screen, which you can't see, but I haven't written a script. This is all me going through, you know, bullet points and uh, trying to hit all the, the important things. And if I did this class again, which sometimes happens, there's only one conversation, three class this semester, but sometimes I have multiple classes and uh, I have the same material, but I, it's slightly different every time because uh, I say the same things, but I'm just, you know, kind of a molding what I say around the ideas, not reading something that's a script. The main reason for that is because it would be incredibly time consuming for me to write exactly what I was gonna say in class, but also if I just read something I prepared, I could just hand it to you and you could go home. And if I read it to you like that, which unfortunately one of my professors in in my undergrad did do this. Basically, a super intelligent guy put up, you know, pages of information on a projector and then just read to us about, I think the class was uh, modern British literature. And uh, he was a very, obviously a very intelligent person, but he just read what he had written to us pretty much, you know, verbatim. And that's one of the most boring things you can imagine because it's not like reading to a kid where you're just like, and then, you know, the three little pigs ran away and the big bad wolf followed him to the brick house. And he took a deep breath. <gasps> like that's, if you're talking like that, then somebody's interested in listening to you. But if you're just reading a textbook, it puts everybody to sleep. So that's, you should not do that. That's not the best way to prepare for an interview. Don't memorize a script. Don't read exactly. Just write it out and hand it in to me and then look at it. Look it over and then flip it over. That's what I have my students do. Flip it over or I just take it away from them and say, okay, give me your homework. Now explain what you wrote without reading it. Just explain it to your classmates or explain it to me. And if you can do that, then you're going to do better in an interview situation. And if you can't do that, uh, or you try to memorize it in order to um, be able to communicate, 
then you're going to have issues. And everybody can tell when something's memorized. Unless you uh, consider yourself an expert actor, I wouldn't attempt to memorize something for an interview because it's pretty obvious. You, you just behave like somewhat like a, a robot. Okay, so that's all the advice I have to give for you in terms of your homework and how to approach it. Um, just so you have an idea of what to expect, the midterm uh, will be evaluated by me and I, I'm going to judge you, you know, there's going to be uh, criteria that I use. Um, you'll get a score out of 100 points and then basically um, you'll be ranked essentially. Uh, there is a grade curve unless Chungnam decides to relax that. I hope they do this semester. I, I, I will actually um, be telling the administration that I believe that we should relax the grade curve this semester because uh, it's very hard to evaluate people in this situation, especially conversation three, because all of you have good speaking skills. Um, I, I shouldn't say all of you, but most of you do. Um, you're, you're upper year students and you, you should have been practicing your English um, throughout the last three or four years, um, two, three or four years. So um, the difference between each person is very slight sometimes. But anyway, I, um, I, get, I break it down into different categories. There are five categories. Um, the five categories are presentation, pronunciation, um, mechanics, which means grammar. Um, presentation means, by the way, it means uh, uh, body language, uh, how you communicate effectively, uh, you know, <clears throat> are there long pauses between um, ideas, and uh, do you hesitate or are you unable to, uh, you know, deliver effectively your, your speech, your answer. Um, pronunciation is fairly straightforward. You understand what that means. You know, do you say the words clearly? Uh, it's okay if you have an accent. Um, everybody comes from different countries, so that's fine. You've got a Korean accent, or you have a Chinese accent, or you have uh, an American accent. It doesn't matter. I don't care. Um, but if the sounds of the words are too far off, um, that will cause you to lose points in that category. Uh, mechanics is grammar in syntax. Uh, fluency means essentially vocabulary and uh, how well you put, toge put together your sentences, collocations, word choice, context, um, the way do you sound like a person who's uh, translated everything from another language or do you sound like somebody who's speaking um, the language and has a sense of how the language is put together. And uh, the fifth category, the last one is content, which just means um, do you give a, uh, an appropriate level of detail? Is it the answer complete? Is it organized? Uh, and I will total those five categories that are 20 points each into a score out of 100. And I will give you a, your score and then you'll be able to see your strong points and your weak points. Um, and that's how we do the, the testing in this class. Okay? So, <clears throat> now to the material. Specifically, um, if you're going to talk about what makes you feel happy, you're probably going to talk about uh, the situation that you're in. Um, you could be generally uh, happy, so you can just say, talk about something that you like in a general sense. Um, but I think in this case, maybe an easy way to, you know, make your answer longer is just to give an example. I often say to my students, you know, if you're struggling about, if you're struggling and uh, having trouble finding something to say, then maybe something that would help is just to, you know, find an example of a particular day, a place, um, a time, or an event, and then talk about exactly what happened on that occasion, and uh, which made you super happy. Like it could almost be related to a particular memory, right? Like your 10th birthday or something or uh, the first time you went to an amusement park and if you have a really clear memory of something you can just really just um, say well something that makes me happy is roller coasters and uh, I can remember the first time I went on a roller coaster um, actually in my case I was terrified uh, and I have this t-shirt it's somewhere around here actually it's like 30 years old now my dad took me on this roller coaster 
called the Dragon Fire in Canada, and I was actually terrified. And uh, I didn't go on a roller coaster for like eight years after that because I was scared of it. And the, but then when I went on the roller coaster again, um, my memory kind of of the <laughs> the day that was so terrifying to me started to change, and I decided that I loved roller coasters and. Uh, I don't get to go on them very often, but every time I go back to Canada, I, I can think about every time I've been to Canada's Wonderland, which is kind of like Everland or Lotte World here, um, I can remember very clearly uh, the, experiences I've, I, the experiences I've had waiting in line for an hour and a half and getting on this gigantic roller coaster and having those three moments of fear, excitement, um, at the end of it and um, I can remember them clearly and so it must be it must have had a, an, uh, an impact on me and as I recall I was I was really happy my heart was beating fast um, I felt like my stomach was in my mouth but um, I remember it as a very happy memory now so what makes you feel happy sometimes it's just the thought right just the idea of going to an amusement park might make you happy. Um, my favorite holiday is Christmas. And uh, the reason I love Christmas is because it's just something that I, that I anticipated. I, I expected, you know, to have family, to meet my cousins and see my family and get a new Lego or Transformers or whatever the thing was that I wanted that year. Um, I wanted to be surprised and to eat delicious food and see my family and uh, hopefully there was a lot of snow to play with and we always we ha I have a lot of really good memories so whenever you know the, the weather starts getting really terrible late November and it's cold and rainy and everybody hates it I'm happy because November sucks but December is coming so that makes me happy all right, so I'm, I've given you a few examples already. This is what I want you to do for your homework. I want you to talk about um, what makes you happy, <clears throat> and then I want you to decide why that, that makes you happy. So what, it, what really is your priority um, is the, the second part of the question is, what is, important, what is the most important thing to you? Uh, in the write-up for this lecture, I included Maslow's hierarchy of needs because, you know, obviously there's certain things that are we, we need in order to survive. We need money because we don't need money itself, but we need money because money gives us food and uh, somewhere to live and clothes to wear. So, you know, um, money itself is a means to these things that we require. Um, money is people sometimes forget that sometimes people do love money. They love counting money and they love having lots of money in the bank or having, you know, gold that is representative of money. But money itself is just not useful. You can't eat money. So it's better to have a cow in the yard than it is to have a pile of gold, you know, underneath your bed, uh, so to speak. But anyway, you can decide. So um, first of all, Think about what makes you happy and talk about that and then sort of reflect about that and um, decide what it is that you're going, the thing that makes you happy, if it's chocolate cake, then you know the thing that makes you happy is food. Um, so that could be an option. Um, maybe the, you know, one of the objects or one of the most important things in your life is your family or maybe it's um, health or education or money. Um, some people get what we call the, uh, the travel bug and this things change in your life like your priority right now it doesn't have to be your priority forever because my priority now as a 38 year old man is completely different than when I was 22 and I was similar age to you. I had different things I was interested in. Are you interested in relationships? Uh, friends? Exercise, traveling, that might be, and that's the difference between somebody who's 20 and somebody who's, you know, 40. They do have different priorities. My priority is my family. And um, there's no way that that's going to 
change in the near future. Probably I might have some different opinion when I'm 60 and my children have grown up, I might be more concerned about my health, for example. So just reflect about yourself and uh, you can decide. You don't have to justify it. Uh, there's no right or wrong answer to this. I just want you to explain um, why you love money so much or why you love exercise or why you love traveling or um, if happiness itself is your object, right? If you're just a, a person who's optimistic, it could be something as simple as music makes you happy and so you play music and you love playing guitar or you love listening to something. It's up to you. Just, I, I would like you to explain yourself. Get used to that because throughout this course, and to be, to be honest, it's, it's, a, it's a fundamental thing when you're in humanities and when you're studying liberal arts, is you should get used to somebody saying, well, why? Why do you say that? So you need to, I'm not saying you have to make an argument. Again, it's not an essay, but, and you don't have to defend yourself because I'm not uh, criticizing you, but you need to support what you say. So that gives a, that, give, that, that ability to do that just prepares you for any situation where you're going to do a presentation, you're going to do a job interview, um, somebody's going to come at you with a question, or you need to just make a decision. If you're just trying to make a decision in your, in your life, it doesn't even have to be related to your career or your future. It can just be, you know, daily life where you need to make a decision and you need to understand why I'm making this decision. It's very difficult sometimes. Um, I'm, well, uh, I mean, I've been through a lot of these things um, and I know that the critical thinking skills and the ability to reason and to support uh, what I think has been essential to me being in front of you right now. If I wasn't able to do that, I, I wouldn't be a professor in this situation. So I'm trying to get you to also develop these thinking skills. Uh, I think they're beneficial no matter what major you're in, whether you're an English major in my department or you're in business or you're in science or any other uh, department in, in Chungnam, um, this will be beneficial to you to just learn how to support yourself when you're making statements. Okay? So treat it like an interview and, and again, you don't have to be super formal, but make sure that you provide reasons and you explain yourself and you give detail because that's what I consider to be a complete answer. Also in the write-up I included uh, the United Nations does this thing called a, I think it's called the Happiness Index and uh, the Happiness Index is basically a survey of how people feel. This is the only way we can get a sense of, you know, how things, uh, how to measure, you know, happiness. It's not perfect, obviously, but it's uh, really the only um, real um, qu um, quantitative analysis that we have of country, uh, of how people think about how happy, that how the people feel about their happiness country by country. So South Korea is not a very happy country. You're probably not surprised about that. I hope you're happy, but individuals add up to, um, you know, a, a population. And this is a measurement of you know, what the situa general situation is in each country. And there are certain things that um, are basic, you know, desires that human beings have and that make a population happier or less happy. And obviously one of those things is like if your economy is healthy, um, that's maybe not the right word. If your economy is growing uh, and people have jobs uh, and education is, is good, like it is in Korea, then you expect to see um, higher levels of happiness. Um, I would normally ask, can you guess what the happiest country in the world is uh, in class? And normally people don't usually guess, but um, that's probably because, uh, it's probably because people sometimes assume the United States has a lot of happy people because we have this thing called the American dream and people believe that the United States is the place to go to be happy and the Cal California is so beautiful and Hawaii and all these kind of things but it's really as a general 
in a general sense, the United States is not even close to the top um, spot in terms of happiness. And that shouldn't be a surprise for anybody who is familiar with the United States because I've been to Detroit. Uh, and it's not like Orlando or Anaheim. Um, it's a different environment. There's a, a large portion of the United States that is unhappy. But anyway, the point is Finland has the number one spot. And uh, all of Northern Europe is generally happier than anywhere else on the planet. My home country of Canada is number nine. We're not Northern Europe, but we're also, also Northern. The only country in the top 10 uh, that isn't in the Northern Hemisphere is Australia. And Australia is number 10. And, uh, you know, everybody knows they're down at the, you know, Southern Hemisphere at the bottom. Oh, excuse me, New Zealand as well. Um, New Zealand also has happy people. So... Uh, it has nothing to do with geography so much as it has to do with the the situation and in, in the, the culture itself. I think Korea is something around currently um, 54. I think we are ranked, which is pretty low considering our economy here is, uh, I don't know this one either, 12 or 13? We're just behind Canada. So Canada's number nine in happiness in maybe number 12 in, in the size of its economy, about that, and uh, which is close. But Korea's economy is similar to Canada's, but its happiness is way lower. And why is that? I, I don't know the answer. But I think the expectations of Koreans are quite high. And uh, that is one of the things I talked about already, is um, you will be happier if you're more easygoing. A lot of Koreans are not easygoing. Um, so if you care too much and you expect too much, you're going to be disappointed and then you're going to be unhappy. This has to do with personality and this has to do with, uh, you know, your environment more than it has to do with actual fundamental principles of happiness. So consider all these things. Um, please read over the textbook. I mentioned in the write-up, the summary this week, that um, this chapter is quite good. It has a lot of stuff. Um, different perspectives. There's a quiz on page two. Um, there's a listening exercise about happiness and the relationship between health and happiness because as we all know, you know, this coronavirus thing, whether you have the virus or don't, a lot of us are unhappy because we're stuck at home. But when we go outside again someday, um, I think we'll all be super happy, which is, that's, that's again what I'm talking about when I mean relative happiness. It's like, if you're stuck inside for three months and then you get to go outside, you're really going to enjoy the outdoors a lot more. That's not, I'm not suggesting that way, that's what we need to do, but it does help. Um, there's a reading exercise on page six and seven that talks about simple pleasures. Um, so there's vocabulary, there's grammar, there's a quiz. Um, read over the stuff in the chapter. Uh, I'm not gonna check that. There's no way of me checking it outside of the classroom. So, but I'm telling you that this chapter Chapter one has a lot of material to give you ideas for what you're gonna write about. Uh, and listen to this lecture, of course. Um, we do have a, we are going to have a makeup class, but it's not in the near future. So we'll deal with that later when it comes. So thank you for listening. And that's all for week two. Um, we'll continue with week three next week. Uh, thank you very much.